So here we come um, to celebrate what I promise is an ancient tradition and not something I just made up for fun. Um, that Easter is a way of understanding God playing a joke on the devil. Because you had that poor devil convinced and just kidding. Um, but before we get to the fun part, uh, let's spend a little time with the convinced part. Because if we're honest... Um, it's pretty easy um, to get convinced um, that there isn't hope. It's pretty easy in turning on the TV. It's pretty easy when we get stuck in some really hard situations to get convinced um, that what we had dared to hope earlier, the person we had dared to follow, um, just didn't work out. And the world won the way the world always won. And the bullies beat up and took care of that one person that we thought could make a difference or lead something differently. And it's all back to the way that it always is. An abuse of power or things falling apart and not working. And it gets really hard. And it gets really dark. Physiologically, we're programmed to remember pain um, more than anything else because it's survival instinct. But we can get trapped there too. And so I just ask that we go easy on Thomas, <laughs> um, basically because right now I'm really identifying <laughs> with him. And I think that at least I know I have in the past been like, oh, how could he not believe? The whole group is there, like, we've seen Jesus. Like, how could he not have that moment? But I get it. I get how he was so far down and so done, there was no way he could bounce back. We've had those moments where life has come again and again and again in such a way that we just can't handle anything else. And this is Thomas. This isn't someone who didn't have some good chutzpah and some good grounding. This is the one who, when Lazarus died, turned all the disciples around to go back with Jesus because they knew how close Mary and Martha and Lazarus were to Jerusalem. It was Thomas who was like, nope, we're going to go. If this is where Jesus says we're going, then we're going to go and we're going to follow. He spent that energy. He staked his ground. He did the right thing, and he followed, and look what happened. Everything fell apart. The worst of the worst of nightmares were right there in front of him. And I just can't blame him for being dropped on his bum so many times that he was just done. Getting back up and trying again just to fall again and have all of his hope crushed again. We've had those moments. We've been stuck. Honestly, I think with Jesus being fully human, I got to think that he has known what that feels like too. And so if I were back there in this room and Jesus is coming in, I just, I got to wonder if it might have gone a little something like this. At first I was afraid, I was petrified, kept thinking I would never break outside those gates of hell. I gave my life for you and for all those trapped here true, and I broke free. And now it's time for victory, cause now I'm back from outer space. Just walked in to find you here with that sad look upon your face. I thought I told you so direct. I thought I made you say it back that I'd be gone for just three days. But then the whole world's going to change. Go now, go. Walk out that door. Turn around now, cause this fear ain't welcome anymore. The world had thought it done its best, that day it thought it won it all. The day I crumbled, 
the day I laid down and died. Well, that's done. And I'm alive, oh, as long as I know how to love, I know I'll be in love. I've got all my life to live. I've got all my love to give. I'm going to survive. I am alive. Hey, because hey. now I'm back. I just walked in to find you here with that sad look upon your face. I thought I told you so direct, but fear has made you all forget that I'd be gone for just three days. And then the whole world's going to change, so let's go. Walk out the door. We're turning around now, because fear ain't welcome anymore. The world had thought it done its best. The world had thought it wanted all. On the day I crumbled, and the day I lay down and done, well, that's done. And I'm alive. And I know all I got, I'll stay alive as long as I got love left to give. Because I got all my life to live. I got all my love to give. And I'll survive. I am alive. Hey, hey. <laughs> so what if Jesus has a moment with the disciples? I mean... The gospel says, right, right there at the end that there were more, many other signs and wonders that happened that aren't written here, but, you know, we've just shared these ones. Maybe there was a disco party. Maybe. We don't know. But what we do know is that fear was transformed into joy. And disciples that were huddled in a room. And Thomas, who just couldn't get up again ever and do one more step found new power, and found new life. And that's our witness. This is what we are called to testify to. Because yes, we have dark days, and some of us, the liturgical season isn't lining up nicely. And for as, all, for as much as we've just celebrated new jobs and new babies, there are others who are still in the throes of their dark night and who are the Thomases that are stuck and can't do one other step because they have given absolutely all they have to give. But that's the Easter resurrection promise, that there is more, that there is a Savior who broke the gates of hell and who came back and who won the victory and so we go and we deal with these dark nights but we deal with them and the promise of faith and of hope and of life and of joy that is ours that we know who has won the war we are soldiers fighting this battle knowing that the victory is ours and so we take that courage we take that survival and we bring that into where we are now into the battles that we are facing now so that we have the courage. We can fight in such a way that we know that we will win, that we know that things will work out because we have, you know, a Gloria in Jesus who will walk back disco style and talk to us about being able to survive, about knowing that there is love and that as long as we have love to give, that we will be alive. That is the word of hope that we so desperately need. And friends, that's why we do this together. So that when each of us are trapped in our dark nights, there can be somebody else who reminds us and keeps us centered. And in Easter resurrection, a group of disciples and friends who surround us and say, you might not be able to see Christ's hands and to touch everything, but we promise that we have seen the Lord. We promise that something is happening and something is changing, even if you can't see it or feel it right now. And we have a Savior who is back, who has come as a conquering victor, and who loves us enough to take the time to come and show us his hands and his feet, and to help us get back up again to breathe into us the power of the Holy Spirit so that we can stand again, so that we can walk freely again. It's not that it won't be painful, and it's not that that pain won't at times take us over. But we are an Easter people, 
and we will survive. And not just survive, but thrive. Because there is a Savior who has come so that we may have life and have it abundantly. And this is something to celebrate and to get really excited about. Because let's be honest, the world is full of really sad, lonely, miserable people. And they just, the world just doesn't need one more added to that. And if we, as church folks, with the resurrection power beyond us, are that way in the world, then how is this good news changing and transforming us and our world? So sometimes the very best thing that we can do for each other is to laugh and is to be playful and is to take the seriousness of this world and turn it upside down because that poor devil, right? That's the ending of today, right? That God takes our convincedness and transforms it and breaks through it. That is the Easter resurrection so that what we can once saw as having the strongest power that nothing could break, that we could not overcome in any way, shape, or form, is now this sad little thing we can pat on its head and put it in its right place. Guys, I cannot preach this without thinking of my father's parents. Um, They were the best at this ever. My grandma had this cackle um, that could break anything, um, and especially my mother's will, when less than one years old, um, I was given a lick of an ice cream cone, much to my mother's chagrin, um, and explicit instructions not to, and I latched onto that ice cream cone, and my grandma started cackling, look, Lisa, she likes it, <laughs> and it was all over, and so I blame my grandmother for my love of ice cream. Um, that's just the way it goes sometimes, but my grandma would cackle, and she had this shirt of an old woman with this little purse, and the poor devil just tail spinning, right? Stars round its head, knocked out, and she just looks, and she's like, he tried to steal my joy. So may we all have that grandmother cackle in us that takes our purses and beats that poor devil up, because there is no way that we will let our joy be stolen. And if we have to be a little ornery about it, we can take a page from my grandfather's book and sit down next beside any kid you meet and just cuddle up and be like, hey, my mom bakes better cookies than your mom. And see what happens. (laughs) That was his classic opener. But may we laugh, may we have fun, may we breathe, may we play, and may we take the creative power that play gives us to turn the world upside down, to not let evil or the spiritual forces of wickedness have any hold in our lives or in our communities because we know who's back and we know who has the power. Amen. Don? Going to 